screen, what we're making is a um, an old-fashioned country store scoop. You know how they used to scoop in and get your stuff out of barrels? Well, this is going to be a scoop. So the screen, whatever you're going to sit on this, this isn't very sturdy. So you need a heavyweight fabric to help. And we're going to totally encase this screen with this fabric. So you need two pieces. Now I've showed this before, but at the Dollar Tree, back where they sell uh, bags of balloons, you can buy this. It is comes in nine sizes of a balloon measurement tool. And they are just plastic. Now their dimensions that they give you is this inside circle. Because you blow your balloons up and stick them inside so you make sure all your balloons for whatever you're making, your arches, whatever, are all the same size. But what you actually get, you get nine sizes of this inside di diameter, but you actually get this outside diameter too. So you get 18 different circles. I can't tell you how much I use these circles. This is the 10 inch one and they're marked on here what sizes they are. But I use these all the time because when you're making dolls and things you need circles. So this one, you want your fabric larger than the, the diameter of your screen. So this one is perfect, this 10 inch circle because you have this extra all the way around. So this is what I'm using to make my circle on my fabric. I'm going to set that aside for a minute. I also picked up at Dollar Tree one of their stencils. Now this one says Our Story, Farmhouse, and the best things. And then it has some leaf designs. I'm only using the word farm, and we're going to stencil that onto our tag that we just grunged. So we're going to do that in a moment after that's dry, but they have all kinds of these stencils out right now, and I picked up quite a few of them yesterday. So I have, uh, you also need a nautical rope, a heavy jute. Um, you can use the thin jute wire or jute string, but it's going to take you much more. This is one bundle. I also picked up yesterday that I hadn't seen before, and this is called mesh tubing. Now this one looks just like burlap, and it feels like burlap. So one of these that I'm doing, these scoops, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use this on it to see how this holds up. But this is what I used on the rest of them. I'm making these, I, I'm doing craft shows, and I'm making these as displays on my table for the little things that I make and so I can have something to put them in. So I thought these were really cute to do. So we're gonna get this painted and I'm gonna trace this with a marker so you can see because the other one, I, other ones I did with a pen, you can't see that. So I'm just laying this circle down and I'm just gonna trace the outside diameter of this circle. Hi, Stephanie. So Stephanie, you just jumped on. We are making an old country store scoop out of a Dollar Tree splatter screen. And I always look for odd different things to put on my tables for displays at shows. So I thought these were perfect. So I'm just tracing this, and what I'm using, Stephanie, if you didn't hear, are these Dollar Tree balloon sizers. There's nine different sizes, so you can get all your balloons the same size. I use these all the time, but I'm using the 10-inch circle because it's just a little bit bigger than our screen to do our circle on our fabric. So you get a perfect circle that way. And then I'm just going to cut these out. And we're going to paint these. And we're going to make them look like the galvanized tin. Just like my little scoop here. See how it's it's all patinaed and 
that's that's an old measuring cup that used to come in what kind of flour? Swan down cake flour. So I just have this sitting on my mantle with uh, cinnamon sticks in it, but it's a one cup measuring cup. But it used to come in flour. Manufacturers used to do that. I don't think any of them do that anymore. But we're going to make this look like old tin that's been around forever. So. And we're only using, I'm putting one coat of paint on both of these. And what I'm do, using is the uh, Castle Folk Art Chalk Paint and a black acrylic. So I'm just going to show you how to do one of these circles because I already have some of them done. And you want a good amount of this. It's a, it's a gray chalk paint. You want a good amount on there, and you want to make sure you get all the way to your edge because your edges is going to show on this. And I'm just using a thumb brush. Now this canvas, I did this morning, and I just had to finish air dry, drying it with a, a dryer. It takes forever for the paint to dry on this stuff. Now while the paint is still wet, we're going to take our black paint, and I'm just putting it right on my brush. Now, if you think about something that's been sitting around for a long time, there are certain areas that are more worn than others. That would be the bottom, where it sits on a surface, your edges. This is a scoop, so it would be the center of the top of the scoop. So that's where you want to put your black paint. And you just want to work it right in to that wet chalk paint. And I'm just smoothing it out. I'm going all the way around it. So some areas are going to be darker and some areas are going to be lighter. So I'm just blending it all in. Now, like I said, the center where something would have been sitting would be darker too. So we're just going to blend this all over. And we're going to make some areas darker than others. And just and you do that just by going back and putting more chalk paint or more of your acrylic paint on that area and then just blending taking your brush from the edge where your paint is and then just pulling it in and that blends it. Whoops. Just came right off my handle there. So now to further blend this, I'm just going to take my brush, my uh, foam brush on the side and just pat it. And that will work some of that darkness into the chalk paint. Now if you think about something that's been around for a long, long time. It has dirt on it. I mean, I have taken a Brillo pad and cleaned this little cup and it still has stuff on it. Now see the bottom of this, how it's darker. So I'm taking some instant coffee Now I just get this. This is the kind I get at uh, Dollar um, at Aldi's. It's like six dollars for that jar. 
and that jar lasts a long time. And I'm just taking it and I'm putting a little bit, I'm squeezing the granules in the center and I'm gonna put it on the edges. Now this canvas, when it gets wet, because it, it is made to be stretched onto a frame, it starts to curl. So I'm just, and we'll take my brush and just pat over top of it. And that will force it down into that paint, but will give you that patina that we want. And you can add as much of this as you want. If you like something really rustic, add a lot. I'm just giving it a little bit of patina. So there you go. So I'm going to set these aside because I already have two done and let those dry. I have wipes here somewhere. So these are the two that I have done. Now, like I said, I had two uh, about a half hour ago. I came in and they were still damp. So I used a, a dryer on them. They're still a little damp, but they're not too wet to use. So we're going to take our splatter screen. Now, like I said, leave this on because we're going to use it for our dimensions. Now there's a slit in the top if it's down over this handle. Make sure that slit is right in the middle of the handle. And this is straight down. And you can tell that just by the wording. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie down here at the bottom and I'm gonna put, just put a little mark on both sides of that cardboard. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. And then I'm taking three fingers, which these, hi Tone, we're using very technical measurements here. I'm taking three fingers <laughs> on each side of this cardboard. And I'm going to make another, another little tick on both sides. I hope your little one is feeling better, Tone. Now we can get rid of this cardboard. So we're using a pair of pliers. Now down here where we made our little ticks is going to be the width of the bottom of our scoop because the bottom is always smaller than the top of the scoop. So I'm taking my pliers and I'm pinching right on the side of that tick and I'm bending it upward. Now there is a front and back on this. You can tell by the handle. The handle on the back is indented and the front of it is kind of rounded. We're doing this to the front and we're folding it upward. So I'm just going to put my pliers right by on that tick and I'm pinching this and that way it'll keep the screen from coming out of this uh, silver ring. And I'm just giving it a bend. And I'm doing that on both sides. You, it's a little difficult to bend this, but if I can bend this, you can bend this. Now, when you use your pliers, make sure your pliers is only on this ring and not on the screen because the screen will rip. We're doing the same thing at the top, right where those ticks are and folding it upward. Now on this top, we made two lines. Make sure you're using the outer line. We're just sending them upward. So now that we got them bent, it should look something like this. Can you start seeing the scoop? So I'm gonna take this side and I'm holding the ring and I'm gonna bend this more. 
Once you get that crease with the pliers, this will bend right real easy. See our scoop? We're going to take our fabric that we've already painted and we're going to glue this on. Now you want your fabric when you put it on to make sure that it comes up over the edges a little bit because we want this silver ring totally encased in our fabric. So we want it to look like it's been forever and my internet just went in and out, didn't it? <laughs> so I'm just hot gluing it. And I'm, do, I'm hot gluing this in little sections because you know if the hot glue hole hits anything cold, it instantly hardens. So this silver ring, it will instantly harden. So I'm making all these little things like little mice and little bowl fillers. And that's what I'm using these scoops for. Now, if you bend it and it's, you think, hi mom, if you think it's bent too much, you can pull this apart just a little bit. Now we're also gonna bend this handle, but we're gonna do that at the end. But this, when we're done, it's gonna look like an old fashioned country store scoop. And I'm putting the glue on the fabric and pinch it together. Now you really want to squeeze these the top and bottom fabric together because you, you don't want this coming apart. And you want that glue to get into the fibers of your fabric. Now at the end, if you notice some of the, the back of the fabric is still showing through, you can go ahead and touch that up with your paint. Or you can trim it off too. Now, like I said, I painted this this morning. This canvas takes forever to dry. So what we're going to have is an old-fashioned galvanized scoop. Because if you have watched any kind of antiques, things used to be made out of metal, out of tin. And glass. Everything came in glass. They made things to last. So I read an article a couple weeks ago about how if you're on Facebook, people are complaining that they're carrying on conversations while they're searching Facebook and those ads start popping up on their feed. Well, Tony and I were talking about car insurance and it's funny that as soon as we stop talking about it, all these insurance for everything under the sun started popping up on my feed. <laughs> I told Tony, I said, well, somebody was listening in. I don't know that they actually do that, but it just seems odd that those things happen. So 
So I'm still running the contest to the end of this month, the 30th of the month. If you hop over to YouTube and join Apple Dolly Creations YouTube, there's a really nice gift that I, I put together. It's a uh, train wear bowl with a light. And I scented rose hips and some little wooden clothespins and some little wooden hearts. And there's cinnamon sticks and uh, nutmeg pods. And there's another kind of a pod that uh, the supplier I get from had. So I, I bought a bunch of those and scented those. And there's some rusty bells. What else is in there? There's all kinds of stuff in it. And then you also get one of my, my pantry tarts. My internet's going in and out. My, one of my pantry tarts that I made. Now this is coffee and cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, all those really good spicy spices is in this. So you get one of these with the light with one of these little train wear balls. And see, so here's the miniature clothespins and rose hips and little wooden hearts that I threw in the mixture. And so, and that's just a thank you gift for joining my YouTube channel. I have these things sitting all over my dining room table that I've been making for a show that I'm doing. <laughs> so, there is our tin scoop. So, we're going to take this handle and hold it. Let me get another one. Hold it right where it attaches to this silver ring. And just, I wrap my finger around this little part here that goes up to the handle and just bend your handle forward a little bit. See how you can do that? And angle it. Because if you're going to use it as a scoop, you can scoop down and get your stuff. So I need to touch up some of my fabric with the paint. <clears throat> but I'm going to take this nautical rope and there's a lot to this and it comes from Dollar Tree. But they have their ends um, taped so that it doesn't come apart on you. I'm taking the tape off. And I'm going to glue it right where the fabric is the whole length of this handle. And I'm going to start on the back of it. Now since the back is concaved, I'm starting right on the fabric. And I'm just going to attach it there and wrap it. Now when you glue this, put your glue on the front from here on, but you want your edges on the on the, this end here on the back. Okay, so we're just going to wrap this. And this is what I thought I would use this tubing for too because it feels and looks like burlap. So I'm not sure how hot glue would hold up to this. So I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna glue it right along the front where the fabric and the handle go. Because you want this, well mine is gonna be used a lot. But you could use these. And I'm also gonna clear coat these. I gotta glue the back here a little bit more. You could use these in your kitchen for fruit after you clear coat it. You can um, use it on a counter for display. I wanna show you a couple ways because I have stuff sitting here that we could display in this. But my, like I said, mine is going to be used for shows. Huh. 
Hopefully by this weekend I will have the website up and going. It's been more of a process than I thought. So as soon as I do, I will do a video on it and show you. So if you are in this little group here, you know Stephanie Palmer watches all the time. If you are looking for t-shirts, she does a really great job. I got one from her for my granddaughter that's graduating this year. It was it, really nice quality, really nice. So you can shoot her a message. And Tone, that's watching today, she's opened the store in the Uniontown Mall. Tone, what's the name of it? You can post that. So us women have to support each other in all of our little adventures we're doing. So I am going, this opening here, I am going right around it. I'm just acting like it's not even there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back here, just because we're at the tip here. Wow, this is really thick. I should have got my side cutters for that. I'm just going to hold this here for a second. And take these ends and just glue it right up over the top. Now, you can just paint yours a plain gray. You don't have to make it look like vintage tin. But most of the things on my displays, I mean, I do have some things that's not um, primitive, but most of it is. So this will fit right in. So I was going to make these and I thought, well, I might as well show you. Some of you might like it too. Because you can use old looking stuff with like modern and antique and so there is our scoop. There's our handle. Can you see the scoop? So that instant coffee really does give <laughs> keep freezing. The instant coffee really does give that patina when you rub it in. And we didn't use very much on there. So, how can we use this? After you clear coat it, you can put, like I said, fruit in it. I have a little doily here. And I'm going to take my little tin measuring cup and put in there. I can put some of our pantry tarts that we've made. And if you want, I can post the recipe for these. But there is a recipe a pinned to the top of my page. We can put that in. Here's a little votive that we did. It has the, um, the prim. We made it look like rust. We can put this in here. We can stick that 
just stick this inside the cup so we can put our tarts in there we can take all this stuff that I have left over from doing the bowls this is just rose hips and cinnamon sticks and stick that in there I have a old whisk broom that we can tuck in there we can put some flowers this is a uh, eucalyptus we can wrap it around this is sweet Annie <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm freezing up I'm not sure what the problem here is today this is sweet Annie a little broom we have some little flowers that we can tuck in So this is just one way of displaying it. So what do you think? So I hope you like it. And see, it is pretty sturdy after you get the, this fabric on it. But what do you think? Hi, Angela. So we took our splatter screen and some canvas, bent screen, and made an old-fashioned country store scoop out of it. Just made a scoop. And it's for displaying things. And you can put all kinds of things in here. You can put a big doily in and not just a little one. You can drape it over the side instead of putting it on the floor of the scoop. You can drape it over the side. And just start putting all your stuff right in there that you like. So I appreciate you watching. Angela, you have to go back and see how we started this whole process. And we just started with this splatter screen that has the handle on it. So let's make our tag. So at the beginning, we grunged this tag and we grunged a piece of sisal. I never use the ribbon that comes on these. I have a... Um, plastic shoe box that I keep ribbon pieces in it. And I use all those ribbon pieces on my dolls. So we're just gonna push this through. And we're gonna take our stencil. And like I said, I'm only using the word farm because it fits on here perfectly. And I will take some of the black acrylic paint Now this takes hardly any paint at all. So I'm putting paint on it and I'm dabbing some of it back off. And I'm gonna hold this really tight on here and just very, very lightly go over those the, the word farm. So just because this says farmhouse, you don't have to use the house part. You can just use the farm part like we're doing. But Dollar Tree has all these stencils now so those of you in the Uniontown area, are you liking the Dollar Tree Plus up by Target? So we did the word farm. Or is it going yet? And I'm going to tie this right onto the handle. Because I love the Dollar Tree Pluses down here. They have so many nice things. They're three and five dollars. The stuff they have. So I can't find my scissors. I'm going to trim this, the ends of this off just a little bit. So there you go. There's our farm tag. Here's our scoop. Here's one way you could display it. Now these pantry tarts, 
it's like I said, is pinned at the top of the page. Now, when you make these after a while, I mean, this one's been made one of the first ones we made and it still smells, but you can take the grunge and that recipe also is at the top of the page and just take your foam brush and go right back down over it with the grunge and re-scent these. Now, when I do that, I always sprinkle more of this uh, cinnamon on it, but these still, we made these, what, November, December, something like that, and they still smell really good, but it's just another way that you can put a nice scent through your house without all the uh, potpourri and all that stuff, but the grunge is at the top of the page. The pantry tart is at the top of the page. If you don't want to make them, let me know. So, I hope you like this idea. And if you try this, send me a picture. Whatever you're making, send me a picture. It doesn't matter whether we've made it or not. Or if it's nothing like I've ever made, it's fine. Like our friend Marsha, she was making wreaths for a show that she was doing. And I posted some of those pictures. And Diana made a wreath with the carrot uh, treat bags at Easter time. Uh, the last time we made something Easter. So, um, yeah, let me know what you're making. Let us share. You might have better ideas of how to do this than I do. So we can take each other's ideas and pull from each other. And so I appreciate you watching. If you could like, share, and comment, I would appreciate that. Also, hop over to YouTube so you can win this nice tree bowl. It has a light in the center and all this goodness with a tart in it. So, <laughs> so hop over there. This had this is a lot fuller than what this one is. This is just what I had left from all the bowls I was filling. See, there's a miniature clothespin. There's this kind of a clothespin. These are mini miniature ones. But hop over there. Two pe people's going to win one of these. And they all have a pantry tart in them. So I appreciate you. If you're new here, welcome. Let us know if somebody joined you so I can give them a special thank you. And have a great evening.